Good morning all, Sprocket Simulations here. Today we are going to be doing a wonderful flight in the Junkers F-13 or the J-13. We are in northern Switzerland, kind of on the border of Italy, Germany, and uh, Switzerland. Kind of the Bernese Alps, I guess, is the area. I'm not too familiar with this area as I normally fly in North America, but I figured this being a iconic German aircraft that we would do something near Germany. And one of my favorite peaks in the world is the Eiger or the Matterhorn. So to talk about this aircraft, I am blown away with the textures, with the modeling, with everything on it. This is a very iconic aircraft that was the first all metal body transport aircraft. It is also the first low wing non-strut non-biplane aircraft this is 1919 that this plane was first developed that's 103 years ago look at the design of this can you imagine only seeing basically fabric biplanes and then all of a sudden this comes out this is after world war one there was kind of a surplus of aircraft of what do we do with them general aviation started to take off or i should say civilian aviation started to take off and this was uh turned into a cargo plane and the most significant part of this is that it turned into really the first airliner and this is the aircraft that started Lufthansa so this was their first airliner and they are still going today I think that's fantastic we're going to take off Head towards that town, make a left turn to bank out around this way, head up over to that little peak that we have coming off to the side here. There's some wind turbines over there, and that's the sign of the valley that we need to turn into. So we'll go ahead and jump in the cockpit. First thing that I want to go over is this little tablet. And I call it a tablet, but it's a piece of wood with a checklist on it. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit on that. Chocks need to be set. If you want to go through the full fun procedure, you're going to open the doors. You're going to request stairs. You're going to request the luggage, and then you're going to request that it should be loaded. Now, if we go out to the outside, you can see now we've got this awesome door cart with luggage that is being slowly loaded into the aircraft. One thing I want to point out is just how much detail they even just put into this little cart. Everything from the fittings to the grain to the patina on the wheels. There's even, you can't see it quite in the grass, but there's a little bit of rust on the bottom. Now, I know that might not seem like a big deal, but if they took that much time to put that much detail into a random little cart to load this aircraft, the amount of detail that they put into the actual aircraft is amazing. 
So we can go ahead and come on back in. We'll go ahead and turn those off. Now we still want our chalk set because we aren't started yet. We'll go ahead and close that. And then we'll come up to our sort of normal view here. And we'll go ahead and get fired up. So we'll go over quickly what the um, sort of knobs and gauges and copper piping and all this awesome, amazing stuff is. This is going to be your fuel valve. This is your alternate fuel valve. This is your magnetos. Throttle. Mixture. This is your ignition, which I am a little bit confused on what this actually does. It doesn't seem to affect the aircraft, but it doesn't it's not a starter. It's it, it doesn't affect the start. It it is even listed in the checklist as quote as needed. So I don't quite understand what that is for. If you do, please let me know in the comments below. This lever here is your fuel pump, and this is your fuel selector. So you have right, both, left. So obviously we want it in both. Looking down, this is your trim. It's more of a trim knob than a wheel. And then I believe this is your fuel level. Um, this is your starter, which is one of my favorite things about this aircraft. So we'll go ahead and get things fired up. So first thing we want to do is make sure we have fuel. Watch here once I turn this on. That starts to fill up. Okay, this is our alternate fuel valve. We want to turn that on as well. That takes us up. Next thing we want to do is turn on our fuel pump. I, I guess we need to turn on our ignition switch, although that doesn't really do anything. And then we're going to turn over our magnetos to both. From here, this is my favorite part. You can set a key bind just to hit start and I'll do the same thing as this, but I just love that. So imagine that this little arm goes into the engine and has a gear ratio that makes spinning this prop from here easy. So you grab this and then actually, sorry, one step I forgot is that we need to make sure our mixture is full and crack the throttle a little bit. So you're going to grab the starter and you're going to spin it. And that's going to basically crank the engine over. So we'll spin it. And there she goes. Fired up off of spinning a little crank. And I love that. So we're going to go ahead and go full throttle. Rotation, well, climb is about 100 kilometers per hour. Um, to go over our gauges real quick, we have our speed indicator, RPMs, and altitude. This is in meters, this is RPMs, and this is in uh, kilometers per hour. And then we have a compass, oil pressure, temperature, and a clock. That's all you get. And I think that's fantastic. So we're just going to go ahead and go full throttle. Little bit of right rudder. There comes the tail. Go ahead and look up a little bit. There we go, it's about a hundred. And up and away. So like I said, once we get over this town, we're looking to climb out at about a hundred and five, a hundred and three. Once we get over this town, we want to make a nice left bank and basically do a nice u-turn 
all the way around. And then we'll trim for our climb. So we're back in that valley. This is where we just took off from, right there. And we're looking to aim for roughly there. So we're gonna come on down to my normal view. Now this, so it's like we don't have a vertical speed indicator. So how do you know what you're doing for a climb? Well, as far as feet per minute, you're not gonna know. But as far as how much you're climbing, you can have a visual representation by watching the front of the aircraft. And if it, it's tricky right now because obviously we're not in Nebraska with flat cornfields, but what you're looking for is to, I just use this as a reference on a point to get my speed to a sort of normal climb. So really I want to look at above that peak. I'm watching my speed. But you can see I'm now in a coordinated climb. I really don't want to drop below really that 110, 100 kilometers an hour. Remember, there's no flaps on this. I'm just watching this sort of like just as you would a needle. Imagine this peak is your zero. And right now I'm climbing at like... Mm, 600 feet per minute. If I was dropping down to about here, I'd be descending about 600 feet per minute, just depending on my speed. So we've got our wind turbines in view. So I'm going to kind of cut that turn a little bit, head up this valley probably can see yep yeah, there's there's the top of the Matterhorn or Iger right there all right so here we are close to the Matterhorn we are over one of my I hate the term bucket list areas, but this is definitely one of those. And I'll show you why. Come to the outside of this beautiful aircraft. Down here. Oh, just a, such a cool plane. Here is where they had telescopes to watch the original climbers make the first ascent of that. Can you imagine? Like that's that's the technology that was there. Just so cool. Now you can see it just peeking out right there. There's a little building. And then we also have let me bank a little over here. Where's it at? There. I think it's right there. There's another building, and those are the two buildings that are sort of highest up. That one there that you can kind of see just peeking out. Um, I can't remember if it was a, a tunnel system with an internal sort of like elevator or what it was, but I, I strongly recommend you go check out the um, Iger documentary it, it well 
it's a dramatization of the first ascent of this and it is very amazing to say the least so what I want to do is fly around over to that little sort of outcrop because that to me is something that is oh look at this peak We're going to follow this valley down to the airport. Now, this aircraft is actually pretty easy to fly, especially because you're not constantly fighting your instruments. You're literally looking where you want to go. I want to go here. I want to stay about in between there. So I'm going to aim for there and just watch my airspeed. Beautiful. That's just the way VFR flying should be. And also you're in this amazingly old aircraft with these copper pipes and we'll pretend there's four passengers back there um, one thing I don't think I uh, showed you yet let me see if I've got it saved yeah I do have it saved you can grab this like you're in a little taxi and say hey everybody okay here's your peanuts enjoy the flight close it up like Think back to 1919, 103 years ago. Like, cars were something that were unique. And here we are in an aircraft, and you're transporting people. Not, this is not military, this is not anything, this is post-World War I, and you are taking people into a plane and flying them somewhere and this was the first one really to do that on any sort of civilian level which I think is amazing Airport should be right here. That's what we're gonna aim for. I, I wish there was a wind sock at this airport, but there is not. Because I would do a little flyby to check it. But we'll come in, and like I said, there's no flaps. I believe the landing checklist is like does your well, not even altimeter work does your dials work is your throttle engaged are your is your area clear okay you're good to land oh oh and also one other thing that I don't think I mentioned is so the exhaust coming out here on the vintage version I can't help it but it's just 
for those of you that have watched the original Mickey Mouse, Steamboat Willie, it just looks like an animated little Steamboat Willie. And I have a hard time looking past that. <laughs> and all it is is that there's heat coming off and there's um, the prop affecting it as well. So one thing that you can see I'm battling with right now is there is a little bit of a crosswind. Now any tail dragger, you've heard me say it before, it's gentle. I like to float it just above the runway. This is a short runway, so we really have to kind of aim for those numbers. We don't want to be going too fast. A little high for that. I'm going to bring the throttle pretty much back to idle. You can see though that that wind is all of a sudden pushing me off to the side. All right, we're at idle. Coming in, gonna bleed off that speed. Gonna float it. All right, we're gonna touch down. A little bounce. Control the rudder, bring that tail down, apply some brakes. There's that tail down. There we go. So, a little tricky, but we, we still had runway left. This is a real short runway. So after a kind of tricky landing, we're going to go ahead and do a quick shutdown procedure here. Um, really all we need to do is go ahead and pull back our mixture. That'll cut our engine off and turn our magnetos all the way over. There we go. So let me. The magnetos are not working. Nope. Interesting. But we wanted to turn off that valve and that valve. Turn off that one, which is our fuel pump. Um, and then. That is pretty much it. We can turn our ignition back in. I honestly cannot find a sort of negative to this plane. Um, it's challenging. It's fun. Um, doing flights like we just did is amazing in this aircraft because you're just you, you feel like you're in that era we just went through the swiss alps and did a flight in a aircraft from 1919 
very, very minimal avionics, like minimal, minimal. Really, I just spent the whole time looking out the window. We, for all intents and purposes, had four passengers in the back and we took them from a little grass field. Maybe they just got done skiing and they needed to come here and we got them here. Um, textures I already mentioned are amazing. Attention to detail is amazing. I'm forever going to call this plane Steamboat Willie uh, because of this exhaust. Um, if you get a chance, please, if you don't know what I'm talking about, please look up Steamboat Willie and it will all make sense. Um, landing, I definitely need to practice with all tail draggers. This one is unique as well because it doesn't have a tail wheel. Um, so I look forward to learning that a little bit more. Um, cockpit is... I mean, just amazing with copper pipes for your fueling, the way the bucket seats are, wood grain, chrome dials, brass dials, fittings, you know, all, all of it is great. This little, uh, you know, sort of taxi window makes me kind of laugh a little bit. Um, it, it's just, it, it's cool. Now watch this. So we're going to set our chocks, we're going to open the door, we're going to get out our staircase, request a luggage cart, and we're going to unload. Unload. Uh, watch the cart now. Look. Now, I didn't zoom in before, but look at the detail on that. That is amazing that they put that much detail into this. I haven't flown the replica all that much, so I'd love to hear your experiences in that. And if you found it to be better than this one, um, but as always, please like, and subscribe. It's definitely going to help me out as I get this channel started. I appreciate you all. I wish you all Many, many happy flights and silky smooth landings. This is Sprocket Simulations saying good evening.